It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Edward P. Morgan and Bill Downs, both from the CBS television news staff. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Val Peterson, Administrator of the Federal Civil Defense Agency. Governor Peterson, on chronoscope, as a matter of fact, a few months ago, you yourself made a very alarming statement. You said, as uh, I remember it, that uh, Russia was capable now of mounting an atomic attack which could cripple the, all the important industrial centers of the United States in one blow. Since then, Mr. Malenkov says that the Russians have the H-bomb. Now, it would be helpful, I think, if you could sort of uh, tell us what has transpired in your shop since then. Is the situation better or worse? Well, I think we're making progress in civil defense across the United States all of the time. So far as the announcement made by Mr. Malenkov, uh, I personally have assumed, uh, as have the people in my agency, uh, that anything that we could do, the Russians eventually would be able to do. You would not dare to make any other assumption uh, in a matter that involves the safety of the United States. I used to coach football years ago as a young fellow, and I found that whenever you underestimated the, fellow you were the uh, opponent you were playing, you were in trouble. And, of course, that's one of the first rules in military activity, too. So I would say that nothing has changed. There is no positive evidence that the Russians have uh, an H-bomb. Uh, you would not have positive evidence until they explode an H-bomb. On the other hand, uh, there's every reason to believe that their scientists would be able to create uh, some type of a thermonuclear device as time goes on. Well, Governor Peterson, isn't it true that if they do have an H-bomb, which is, they say, 20 times more powerful than an A-bomb, that uh, our problem is much more acute. In other words, it would take 20 less airplanes, for example, to do the job you say that they are capable of doing. Well, if it were only 20 times, any, uh, any bomb of that type that they had were only 20 times uh, more destructive than an H-bomb, our problem wouldn't be quite so bad as it probably is. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, if and when the Russians have devices of that type, and have enough of them to uh, mount an attack against the United States, certainly it makes our problem much more difficult. It's a matter of degree, however. Uh, that type of a bomb would only, will, will destroy a, a greater area, damage a greater area, kill more people if they happen to be in the area. But uh, the, the A-bomb is bad enough. Governor, is it correct to assume that one of your biggest problems is a sort of a psychological one? I mean this. It's the problem of awakening people to the danger without crying wolf. Assuming that is true, how do you do it? Well, I think the only way in the world to arouse the American people is to give the American people the facts just as closely as it's possible to do so. Now, no one would propose that you give military secrets away. Certainly, I wouldn't do that. But the people must know all that there is to be, that they can know, about enemy capabilities, about enemy weapons, and the effects of those weapons. And knowing that truth, I think you can, you can uh, uh, believe that the people will take the action that's necessary to protect themselves. Well, Governor, you said that uh, between 8 and 20 million people would be killed in event of an all-out attack, atomic or nuclear attack on our country. Now, don't you believe that this, this uh, concept is hard for the people to, to grasp? And, and isn't that one of your sort yes. of thing? Yeah. Well, it overawes them. I mean, myself, for example, I, I have no feeling. What could I do about it? Maybe I'm one of those. You know. There are many things that the individual can do, and of course there are many things that we can do as a nation to protect, uh, to minimize the effects of an atomic attack upon the United States. Now, the fact of the matter is we are dealing with a new problem because the atomic weapon is only eight years old, and the, the idea of intercontinental bombers that can uh, fly from country to country dropping bombs has completely revolutionized military strategy. And the figures that are involved are stupendous. However, 
the fact that the problem is tough does not mean that we do not have to meet it. And as far as I'm able to figure in my own mind, as I understand Americans, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be equal to the occasion uh, when, when it arises. Governor, I want to go back, if I may, to something you said just a moment ago, which was that you thought that the American people could arise to the situation uh, given the information. President Eisenhower said not so very long ago, uh, rather urgently, that he thought that the people by all means should have more information about the atomic situation. Um, and I want to interrupt myself just a little to uh, dig into my notes, if you'll permit me, and read something that I jotted down from the New York Herald Tribune, which says, this was printed a few weeks ago, it is actually impossible to plan proper shelters against atomic attack in this country because the relevant information has not been released to the Civil Defense Administration by the Atomic Energy Commission or the military. Now the question is, after that rather cumbersome buildup, has anything perceptibly been loosened up? Well, now as a matter of fact, uh, and, and with uh, due respect for that great newspaper for which I have a personal liking, uh, the fact of the matter is that, the, uh, that my agency is well briefed by the Atomic Energy Commission all of the time and by the Department of Defense. We do have the information. However, uh, we haven't done as much research as we should do. As a matter of fact, we've done very little research uh, with respect to the effects of bombing upon civilian type of structures. The research that we have done has been largely in connection with the, uh, the effects of atomic explosions upon military installations and military instruments upon battleships and upon airplanes. And we need to do a great deal more research as that editorial or article suggests. Well, who's fallen on their face then, Governor? Because this is not a strictly military weapon. This is a weapon that strikes at the civilian population. That is the chief uh, value. Well, that, Why aren't you getting this That's simply a shift in military strategy. The attacks now are made upon civilians and upon instruments of productivity rather than upon armies. Yeah. Uh, we are getting that information. We have not done as much research as we should have done, uh, primarily because we have not had the funds. Uh, some of the information that the military has is valuable to us, and we're in the process of transcribing it. But bear in mind that that becomes a very detailed uh, uh, and intricate engineering and uh, technical uh, procedure, and uh, we haven't done as much of it as we should do. That's However, I want to say this about shelters. It's entirely possible to build shelters that will protect people against any kind of an explosion, atomic or any other type of an explosion. If we wanted to take, if we wanted to take America into the ground, uh, we could protect ourselves against uh, uh, these attacks. However, we would do it at a cost of billions of dollars, a fantastic amount of money. And so far, there's been no disposition upon the part of the American people or upon its representatives in the American Congress to take Americans under the ground. Well, don't you feel, Governor, that since we happen to be the major targets of this new weapon, H and A bomb, that uh, we should have more information about it? And the reason some of the apathy is that we don't realize what's going on. Well, I, I think gen generally I believe that whatever is the public's business is best handled by the public and by the public directly based upon sound information. And uh, my agency has attempted to give the public all of the information it possibly could. And I know that the prevailing sentiment in Washington is to give the people all of the information that is possible, uh, short always, of course, of giving the enemy information which nobody would want to do. Governor, that brings up another point, the actual organization uh, of civil defense on the part of volunteer workers. Uh, I've had the impression in talking to some friends of mine who have uh, done some volunteer work in civil defense here in New York City and other cities, that an awful lot of people, if you will pardon the expression, uh, go into it out of boredom. They're tired of, of bridge or scrabble or whatever, and uh, uh, they go into it just to see what can be done. Now, what about this public apathy? Well, uh, I think that there is a failure on the part of the public to realize the danger in which America lives. And I think there are several reasons for that. And if you'll permit me, I would, I would try to outline them very rapidly. First, most of us uh, do not like to do today what we should do in order to prepare for tomorrow. We procrastinate. We're a little bit lazy. That's true in our private lives. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, anyone of intelligence and information is hoping and praying that we won't have a third world war. Because in this uh, age of the atomic weapon, uh, war would be a, a third world war would be a catastrophe for all mankind. 
And some people in that connection, and I offer this as another reason, are wishing that there will not be a third world war, and they're wishing so hard that they've wished it into a reality. Well, and then in addition to that, there are two other things that are quite important. Some people say, well, the destructiveness of modern atomic, uh, of the, of atomic bombs and of uh, these uh, thermonuclear devices that may come into play will be so great that there isn't anything you can do about it. And then finally, and this is quite significant, about 60% of the American people revealed in the study which we made through the University of Michigan a year ago that they believed that the military could stop the atomic bombs from falling upon the United States. Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you that uh, the military will tell you that as of today, they cannot stop a successful Russian attack. That can be corroborated rather dramatically, and we didn't plan it this way, Governor, but the floor manager has just handed me a bulletin saying, quoting Pravda as saying that the Russians have just exploded a hydrogen bomb. Now, as a final question, uh, and this, <laughs> we might say, a loaded one, very quickly, uh, with that information, could you tell us uh, in about three words what we should do with that in mind? I should say that we should step up our uh, civil defense program and we should, of course, step up our military defense program. Thank you very much indeed, Governor Val Peterson. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Edward P. Morgan and Bill Downs, both of the CBS television news staff. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Val Peterson. Administrator of the Federal Civil Defense Agency. If you're contemplating the purchase of a very fine watch, it would be profitable to you to compare the facts about Longines with the facts you have about any other watch. And you'll find that the facts about Longines are convincing proof of surpassing quality. Factual evidence that in a Longines watch, you have one of the world's very finest timepieces. For in competition with the world's best watches, Longines watches alone have won, for excellence and elegance, 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals. For accuracy, highest honors from the leading government observatories. For dependability, a position of leadership in sports, aviation, and in science. Yet. Though Longines is one of the very finest watches made anywhere in the world, a Longines watch is not excessively expensive because you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. And, and this is important, whatever the price, every Longines watch is manufactured to the high standards of quality which have made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Longines, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.